Hello, you are welcome once again to another interesting series of bio-risk management practice questions, part five, and I remain Dr. Ia Izebasi. We'll try to be a bit quick and I hope you enjoy it. So, question one, which of the following is not a common bio-risk management practice in healthcare facilities? A. Proper hand hygiene, B, use of personal protective equipment, C, encouraging sick employees to come to work, D, routine cleaning and disinfection of surfaces. And the answer is C. Question number two, which of the following is a common bio-risk management practice in laboratory settings? A, using outdated equipment, B, ignoring biohazard symbols, C, regular training and education, D, inadequate waste disposal. Answer once again is C. Question number three. What does the term containment refer to in virus management? A is the process of safely disposing of laboratory waste. B, the use of personal protective equipment. C, the prevention of accidental release or escape of biological agents. D, the proper storage of laboratory equipment. And the answer is C, once again. <laughs> All right, question number four. Which of the following control measures would you provide the best protection for an employee handling a biological agent that is easily transmitted by the aerosol route? A, washing hands and disinfecting bench tops. I don't think so. B, working in a biological safety cabinet and using sealed centrifuge cups. That looks like a correct answer. C, washing your hands and using sealed centrifuge cups. One is not right. D, working in a biological safety cabinet and disinfecting bench tops. And the answer is B. So question number five. What the objectives of the CEN workshop are with 159 15793 Laboratory Virus Management is to A, instruct individuals on how to classify biological agents to risk groups, B, outline the legally binding mandatory requirements for managing, bio risk, uh, managing biological risk, C, describe the components of a performance-based approach to managing biological risk, D, defining the requirements for certifying laboratories to biosafety levels two and three? Your answer is C. Question number six. One of the roles of a bio-risk management officer is to ensure A, is to ensure sufficient resources are provided to safely work with biological agents. B, discipline employees who refuse to wear protective equipment and follow safety practices. C, conduct background checks on employees to ensure they are suitable for working with biological agents. D, provide guidance on the development of virus uh, management procedures. Your answer is D. Question number seven. Which of the following is an example of a secondary containment measure? Secondary, not primary, take notes. A, autoclaving laboratory waste. B, using a biosafety cabinet. C, properly labeling hazardous materials. D, installing access control programs. I would eat A. So please, if you have not uh, subscribed to our channel, do so. This is a free resource. If you've not liked to do so, put a comment and give us feedback on how we are doing. And please share this resource to other people who know might need it. Thank you very much for your support. Question number eight. Hazard communication standard is a standard that gives workers the dash and the dash in the workplace information about identities, hazards of chemicals, and nature of samples handled in the laboratory. A, the right to know and the right to understand safety. B, the right to know and the right to sue employers. That's interesting. C, the right to disengage and the right to understand safety. D, none of the above. The answer would be A. Question number nine. One of the following is not a step to an effective hazard communication, communication program. A, learn the standard and identify responsible staff. 
particular activities such as trainings and enlightenment. B, prepare and implement a written hazard communication program. C, ensure that containers and samples are handled, maintain safety data sheet, inform and train employees, evaluate and reassess. D, none of the above. I would go with none of the above. All right? So question number 10. In an incident response plan, what is the primary goal? A, to prevent all incidents. B, the goal of the incident response is to handle security breaches or situations in a way that limits damage and reduces recovery time and cost. That sounds nice. That sounds correct. D, to identify every single incident. C, that was C, then D, to allocate blame for incidents. I will go with B. <laughs> So now question number 11, which team typically takes the lead during the incidents response process? A, your IT support team, B, your human resources, C, computer security, incident response team, that looks like the answer, D is not correct. Okay, question number 12, there are six phases of an incident response plan arrange them in the correct sequence. You have correct sequence it will be preparation first, then you identify, then you contain, you eradicate, cover, and then you get your lessons learned. So question number 13, what is the first step in the incident response life cycle? You have A, recovery, B, detection analysis, C, D, containment, and the answer is operation. Question number 14. What does the containment phase of the incident response plan involve? It involves preventing the incident from spreading further. You are de-escalating the incident, all right? So question number 15. What is the role of a communication plan in incident response? A to ignore all external communication during an incident, B, to inform stakeholders about the incident promptly, C, to withhold information from stakeholders to prevent panic, D, to blame external parties for incidents. Your answer is B. Question number 16. An incident response plan is a set of written instructions that outline the organization's response to network events security incidents and confirm breaches. What is the purpose of documenting incidents response procedures? You do that because you want that particular documentation to serve as a reference during another incident. Question number 17, before we go into this, please, if you have not subscribed, do so. This is a free response, free uh, resource, and this is the only way we can keep the channel going. Please like, please comment, please share. Thank you so much. So mention two exercises using incident response program. You would have your tabletop and functional exercises. Question number 18. What is the key difference between a disaster recovery plan and an incident recovery plan? The incident response plan only focuses on natural disaster. B, the incident response plan focuses on immediate action during an incident, while the disaster recovery plans focus on long-term recovery. C, disaster recovery plans are less detailed than incident response, uh, response plans. D, disaster recovery plans are only applicable to cyber incidents. Your answer will be B. All right, question number 19. <clears throat> Which phase of the incident response life cycle involves restoring affected systems and data? A, preparation. B, detection and analysis. C, Containment, D, recovery. Your answer is recovery. Question number 20. Which of the following is an example of an external incident trigger that will be unauthorized access attempts? 
Question number 21, what is the purpose of establishing rules <laughs> and responsibility in an incident response plan? A, to assign blame for incidents. <laughs> B, to ensure accountability and clear direction during an incident. C, to keep the response team small and agile. D, to delay response to incidents. I don't think you want to the plan to fail. You want it to work. So you want a clear direction during that. All right. Question number 22, the importance of an incident response is to avoid the collapse of the laboratory system or establishment. An incident activity that is not properly contained or handled can lead to a bigger problem, thereby causing system collapse. Is this true? False. Answer is true. Question number 23, what is a safety data sheet, aka SDS, used for in hazard communication? A, to document employee attendance, B, to list hazardous chemicals and their properties, C, to record production statistics, D, to track employee performance. I would go with B. Question number 24, what does the hazard communication standard require employers to provide to employees? Free snacks, I would like that. B, training on hazardous chemicals. C, extra vacation days, yay! D, office supplies. I will go with training on hazardous chemicals. Question number 25. What information is typically found on a chemical label in accordance with hazard communication standards. A, employee contact information, production date of chemicals, C, hazard warnings and precautions, D, the company's social media handles. How would that help us? So C is the answer. Question number 26, what is the primary goal of hazard communication symbols such as pictograms and warning label? A, to confuse employees, I don't think so. B, to serve as a decoration in the workplace. That's interesting. C, to provide clear and easily recognizable warnings about hazards. D, to create a relaxed work environment. I will go with C. Question number 27. What is the significance of hazard communication in multilingual workplaces? A, it reduces the need for translational services. B, it ensures that all employees understand safety information regardless of language barriers. D, it encourages communication amongst employees. That was C. Then D, it increases workplace conflicts. I will go with B, all right? So the hazard communication, once you see um, diagram, pictogram and everything you don't need to english to know you don't need french you don't need german you just see it and you know that it means this that's the universality of um hazard communication all right so question number 28 what is the purpose of hazard communication audits a you want to increase workplace hazards why would i want to do that b to ensure compliance with hazard communication standards D, to discourage workplace safety. Why would I want to do that? D, to decrease productivity. My answer would be B. So question number 29. How often should hazard communication training be provide to, provided to employees? You have once a year, once every two years, once every five years. Only once during an employee's team. That means if an employee was 35 years, you'll do it only once. Doesn't count. We do it once every year. Remind ourselves what it is, okay? Question number 30, what role do safety mater do material safety data sheets play in hazard communication? The answer is they contain details about hazardous materials and their characteristics, all right? Question number 31, which option is not a component of communication standard? have hazard classifications and labels, B, you have safety data sheets, like that one is there too. C, information and training, D, none of the above. I will go with none of the above. Notice that the question is a negative one. It says it's not. And all these are all um, 
components of hazard communication standard. All right, question number 32, who is responsible for ensuring that containers of hazardous chemicals are properly labeled? Who is responsible? The safety officers or supervisors are responsible for that. Question number 33. Oh, that's a repeat again. And the answer is the safety officers. Question number 33. What happens if one of the components in a bio risk management system is overlooked or is not addressed? The system will fail. Very, very easy. Because uh, if you remember that diagram we had in the teaching uh, lecture, the bio risk uh, management system is like a three legged stool. And you know, for a three legged stool, if you remove one leg, the other two cannot stand. The system will fail, the chair will fall. All right. So, question number 35 How do we handle chemical spills? A, you control the source of the spill. B, you contain the spill. C, you isolate the area concerned. If appropriate, D, contact the authorities and then clean up the spill. E, all of the above. So, go with that. Having reached the end of this question and answer session, I want to say please subscribe, comment, share, and like. And finally, I want to say thank you for listening. God bless and take care. Bye.